Whoa. Look at that. Another good sized tench. Welcome to another Battle of the Baits competition. This time it's old school versus new. So old school I mean in sweet corn on this session and a new bait will be using the cell mainline baits I love the smell of these they smell like a alcoholic cocktail I've still got a few PVAs made up from the last trip they went in the freezer and they froze really well look so don't just bin them in the lake I didn't realize you could freeze PVA look at that It's going to be 23 degrees today, so I've got my little mini brolly just to keep the sun off my face. I'm going to have a little salt out, get some baits on both rods, and I'm going to fish the centre of the lake. This lake is very deep in the edge, but it gets deeper as it goes to the middle, so it's like a bowl. So I'm going to fish both rods fairly near each other. Boily versus sweet corn. Here's a tip for you. Ah, oh, <laughs> here's a tip for you. Don't rest your rods on your brolly because it hits you in the back of the head. What a great tip. Back to the real tip. <laughs> buy frozen corn. If you buy the tins, you don't get much for your money. Buy a bag like this, this is a kilo or a kilo and a half. You get so much corn and you can chuck it in the freezer to reuse it if you don't use it all up. And there we are, a bottom bait boily, which is cell, and two bits of corn on the other one, just on a simple hair rig. On a safety leg clip system so let me tell you about the lake it has carp in it mirrors and commons some good sized tench i had a seven pound tench out of here a good sized bream so uh good chance of having a 10 pound bream on that sweet corn I've actually caught a 10 pound bream on a boily before, so who knows? It's a fair game. Boily versus corn. Fish like them both, but only one can come out on top today. Right, hands free. I've actually got one of these chest strap things where you can attach your phone to you. Yeah? It's a uh, I've got one that's set up, but you never know. I don't expect to get two takes at once on this lake because it's not a runs water or anything, but you never know. So let's get this other net set up just in case it kicks off. I'm just going to bait up another area just in case it's too quiet and we don't get any fish. It's really deep in the margins, so um, I'm going to put a couple of handfuls of corn just down here. Gives us other, other options uh, if nothing's happening. I believe we have a fish on. a very good chance it's it's a bream let's lift up into it well there's something on here so 
This is the sweet corn rod. Fish on, fish on. Doesn't feel massive. Let me duck down and get a net. Oh, it's tugging. Could even be a tench. Oh, no, it's a big old slab. Here we go. Let's get it in the net. Come on, Breamy. Here we are. Not the best filming, but I need to get used to this chest camera thing. Fish number one. It's quite a good sized bream, you know. Seven or eight pound. No, seven at the most. Pushing my luck there. Let's get it back. It's getting quite warm now. Right. Off you go, matey. Nose up, nose up. Well, that was a fairly quick bit of action. I was wondering if anything would happen uh, until the afternoon, so that's a good start. Time for a pastry and a cuppa. Just drying out some corn. <laughs> it's not going so well in a PVA bag, surprisingly. Not surprisingly, I mean. Yogurt with banana is my new favourite thing. Proper good. <laughs> the rod tip is tugging. We're getting the odd beep, which means sweet corn. And a bream. Oh, it's giving it a little tug. Oh, sounds a bit rude. <laughs> Here he comes. It's a bit smaller than the last one. Bream love a bit of sweet corn, don't they? Sweet corn is definitely the bait for the bream today. Looks like it's bream o'clock. That's a nice bream. Look at that beauty. It's probably seven pound again, maybe. I'm not going to weigh in, but it's quite a bit of weight there. I think I'm just going to leave the net there. <laughs> Seems like we've got a steady flow of bream. Let's, we, let's see if we can uh, get the carp on the move with this boilie rod. Let's see if there's any more movement. It's a couple of beeps and it's stopped, so could be a bream sitting on it, could be nothing, but the way the rod tip pulled down, it looked like something was there, so. <laughs> I think I'm gonna strike this. It stole the sweet corn. Haha, <laughs> came off. <laughs> With the rod tip tugging away. Oh, it's actually pulling hard. <laughs> With a bit of luck, it might be a tench. And that came out nice and easy. Another tench. 
another tench, another bream, four or five pounds. Oh, a bream that has a bit of fight in him. Well, I'm managing to put PVAs on just about. Don't go already, I've just put you in the water, literally 30 seconds ago. So four bream, I managed to actually get some uh, corn in a PVA by just drying it out in the sun a bit. Um, I suppose I could have bought a spud rod out if I wanted to really bait up with a corn. Um, but there's no need is there, look, I've got a steady flow of fish on the corn. I've just recast the uh, boilie rod with a bag, PVA bag of crushed boilies and the response pellets probably got much more of a chance of a carp on the boilie I imagine later afternoon might be the time for the carp to make an appearance but as it stands 4-0 to the old school this is the life I actually feel quite calm and relaxed I don't often feel calm and relaxed New Mexico and took the wreckage and flew it in two different aircrafts in case one of them listening to Joe Rogan just talking about UFOs and uh, <laughs> spaceships and stuff <clears throat> apparently America has got a sp spacecraft hidden from the public that comes from another planet hello knocking at the door Bream are like the soppiest fish of the lake, aren't they? They're like the stoner fish of the lake. Not too bothered about putting up a fight. Oh, he heard what I said. See that? He's like, oh yeah, check this. Well, I have to say, I wouldn't normally go fishing for bream, normally after carp, but I'm really enjoying it. It's been a good day. Hopefully the carp will make an appearance later on in the day. That's what usually happens on this lake. Or Maybe a couple make an appearance on the corn. That'd be even better. Fishing a little bit closer in now. And it seems like there's plenty of fish down there. <laughs> Whoa! That's a bream, it is. <laughs> if that's a bream, that was pulling my rod around. Oh, a bream. It's kicking a little. Please be a tench. Tench would be nice. Let's go and have a look. Here we are. It is bream number six. And this is a knob, knobby one. What's the word? It's got them things on its head. A knobby bream. You're all right. Won't be long. You'll be back in the lake before you know it. Hook out. Hook out. Here he is. Number six. Let's not mess with him too much. Let's put him straight back. Off you go. Guess what? Come on, matey. Look 
Good bit of action. Where are you? Got your head down. It's a lunka. I used to play this old fishing game years ago. Can't remember what it's called, but you'd hook a fish and it and if it lunked out in the distance it'd be like it's a lunka and you usually lost a lunker. It's kind of line was wrapped around him I think. It's a bream lunka. Have a bit of water bream. It's a hot day. Is that starting to lose track? Six? Or is it seven? It's quite a pale one this. Different colour to the rest. It's quite light in colour. Nice fish though. <laughs> Yay. Fish number eight. Guess what this is? <laughs> That's been out there about two minutes. This feels it's like very, very small. Let's go and take a look what it is. Just unhook this in the net. I won't get out because the uh, unhooking mat is quite hot. So, what's that? I think, is that fish number eight? I'm writing, I'm making notes of it in my phone. I just have to check how many fish that is. Hello, mate. <laughs> he like stuck his mouth out to say, see you later. I'm pulling out the big guns now. Let's get a pop up on. Nothing is happening on the boilie rod. So it's time to change it up. All right, pop up time. Got a shot just that side of the hook to pin it down. I've squeezed a load of the cell juice stuff, which looks a bit, uh, yes, I won't say what it looks like. <laughs> Let's get it out there. Easy, Breamy. That is quite a big old slab. Could be an eight pounder. Could be an eight pounder. The boilie rod's missing. That's because I finally had a take and it's something different. Let's take a look. Here we are. I've been waiting for a nice big tench. Oh, it is pristine. What a beautiful, beautiful tench. Perfect. Well done, Boily. The Boily actually found a tench. Hopefully, the Boily will find a carp next. <laughs> Well, I seem to have caught all the bream in the lake because, <laughs> because they've stopped biting, finally. That was, uh, that was non-stop, really, from in the first sort of half hour, half an hour when I cast out. The bream just started and uh, didn't leave for a good while. Um, I'm sure they'll make an appearance again. But I'm really chuffed with the left-hand cell Boil is changing over to a pop-up and I'm casting somewhere different now. I'm casting along the rushes um, just before it meets that bush and I've got it 
bang on in the same spot with a PVA with all that gunk squeezed over it just to uh, hopefully attract the fish and I'm pretty certain a carp's coming along before the end of the day well, well this is tricky <laughs> I'm going to have to stop filming because I'm holding my phone in my hand while playing what could potentially be a carp. Well it wasn't a carp, but it's the next best thing. <laughs> Look at that! Another good sized tench. I'm so glad I changed over to the pop-ups. So, looks like it's two to the cell, nine or 10 to the sweet corn, but I do prefer the cell and the tench is catching. Just wondering if this day will go from bream, tench, Carp, carp to round off the day. Don't even know what the time is. Let me have a quick look. 4:38. It's almost the witching hour. Come on, the carp. We have a fish on, and I believe it's bream number 10. So we've made it to double figures with the bream. Bream number 10. So there's a chance the bream might be back. <laughs> what happened? I was casting at distance to the centre of the lake and I just thought I could be in 20 foot of water there. Why not cast to where I baited up this morning? So I threw some more corn out within 10 minutes. Another bring came along. It's around five o'clock now and this is prime time to snatch a carp from out by that bush. And there we go, proof that the bream are back in the building. Number 11. The good thing is as well with corn and fish that don't fight too hard, can you see I've got my stop still on the hair. So most every fish I can reuse the stop. Well I've got a fish in that net and the other nets, the other net, the other rod's going. Well, bream rod took off, so bream number 12. I shall return this and show you something a bit different on the other rod. Well, it's not big, but it's what we've been after all day. One of the chunkiest little commons I've ever seen. I told you it was the witching hour, eh? Five o'clock onwards, and the carp appear. Sneaky. <laughs> I had a few tugs on this rod about 10 minutes ago, I thought I'd better check it. No baits. Something has tugged off the sweet corn. Six o'clock now. I think I'm going to recast the carp rod. <laughs> I'm going to call this the carp rod and that the other one the bream rod. Recast the carp rod, try to get it in that gap. That's where the carp hang out. Hello, Heron. Doing a circuit of the lake. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to uh, reel my carp rod in to recast it. Bream rod, cast it out, put it on the buzzers, and it went within five seconds or so. Number 
<laughs> just pulled my rod around to see what it is and it's probably no surprise I'll leave it out, I just put it down here about four seconds ago the bream are mad for it come on bremo it's actually putting up a hefty look at it hefty old fight oh that's pulling that is actually pulling really hard for a bream it's tugging away how big is he wait uh oh get off that branch no you don't belong on a branch He's off the branch. All right, let me land him because he's causing trouble. Here he is, the troublemaker. Well, before I could even get my broom rod out, the carp rod went off and it doesn't feel like a carp at all. And the reason I'm talking weird is I've got that in my mouth. Well, carp rod, catching a bream on the carp rod is against the law. Oh, I'm all breamed out. Well, for this bait versus bait video, the sweet corn was mightier than the boily. Depends how you look at it, really. <laughs> Sweet corn, caught 13 fish. Boily has caught one, two, three, four fish. 13, seven, that's 17 fish. That's not bad going. Don't think I've ever caught 14 bream in a day before. That is really good. Anyway, old school baits are still the business. They always will be. But there's a place for the boily. Very soon I'll be doing a giveaway video, so watch out for that. It'll be uploaded in the next few days probably. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. See you soon.